Let's take a closer look at plant and animal cells. While they share many similarities, because they're both eukaryotic cells, meaning they have a nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles, there are some key differences in their structure and function. These differences are important because they help each type of cell do what it needs to do in its specific environment. At the heart of both plant and animal cells is the nucleus, which acts as the control center. It holds the cell's DNA, the blueprint that provides instructions for everything the cell does. This is the same in both plant and animal cells, as both rely on the nucleus to regulate growth, reproduction, and everyday functions. Surrounding the nucleus, both cell types have a cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like substance that fills the space within the cell and supports all the organelles, like the mitochondria, which are found in both plant and animal cells too. Mitochondria are the powerhouses, converting nutrients into energy that the cell can use. So whether we're talking about a leaf cell in a plant or a muscle cell in an animal, both need mitochondria to fuel their activities. However, plant cells have some additional structures that animal cells don't. One of the most important is the cell wall, a rigid outer layer that provides support and protection. The cell wall helps plants maintain their shape and allows them to grow tall, even though they don't have skeletons like animals. Imagine a plant standing upright. Its ability to do that comes from the strength of its cell walls, which give it structural support, much like the walls of a building. Animal cells, on the other hand, don't have cell walls. They only have a cell membrane, which is flexible and allows them to take on different shapes. This flexibility is useful for animals, especially for movement. For example, white blood cells in humans can squeeze through tight spaces to reach areas of infection, something plant cells couldn't do because of their rigid walls. Another important difference is the chloroplasts in plant cells. These are the solar panels of the cell capturing sunlight and using it to make food through photosynthesis. Chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is why plants are green. This allows plants to produce their own energy from sunlight, making them self-sufficient when it comes to food production. Animal cells, on the other hand, don't have chloroplasts because they get their energy by consuming food rather than producing it. This difference is why plants can stand still and thrive by absorbing sunlight, while animals need to move around to find food. Inside plant cells, you'll also find a large vacuole, which acts like a storage tank. The vacuole holds water, nutrients, and waste, and in many cases, it helps the plant maintain its shape by providing internal pressure, like a balloon inside the cell. When the vacuole is full of water, the plant stands firm, but when the vacuole loses water, the plant wilts. Animal cells have vacuoles too, but they are much smaller and used mainly for temporary storage. They don't need large vacuoles because animals don't rely on internal water pressure to maintain their shape like plants do. While both plant and animal cells share key organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, and ribosomes, it's the differences that define their roles in life. Plant cells with their rigid cell walls, chloroplasts, and large vacuoles are built to stand firm and produce their own food. Animal cells, on the other hand, are more flexible and specialized for movement, hunting for food, and responding quickly to their environment. The structures in each type of cell are perfectly suited to the life each organism leads, showing just how adaptable and efficient nature can be. Both plant and animal cells are remarkable in their own ways, and while they share a common design, the unique features of each are what allow plants to grow tall and green and animals to be flexible, active, and mobile. Whether you're looking at the leaf of a tree or the cells in your own body, you can see how structure and function come together to help each type of cell thrive in its own world.